Now, before we get into the new coding techniques and skills that will help you level up your T-SQL, it's important that we cover one very fundamental concept when it comes to writing T-SQL code, and that is thinking in sets. A SQL Server is built on the premise of performing operations in sets, not in individual rows, one by one by one by one. Now, this may differ quite a bit from the way that you and I have learned to code on other systems. For example, if you're a web developer, you've written web forms with data grids, and when the information comes back to the web server and needs to be processed, what happens is that code processes each row of the data grid one at a time. And then when it gets to the end of examining, validating, transforming whatever data is in that row, it will commit that row individually. This process will then loop through until all of the rows in the data grid have been processed. If we think about that pattern in a simpler language, what we're really saying is for each row in the table, do this with column A, this with column B, and so on. Now let's take that same pattern that we just described and apply it to T-SQL. If we did that, what we'd get is something a lot like this. It would be a cursor and we'd loop through the cursor and do the same validation and transformation on each row. And when we get to the end of that process, commit that row individually. We then loop through the rest of the rows in the cursor, repeating that same logic. Now web servers can handle this sort of pattern pretty easily, partly because web forms are usually limited to what, 25, maybe 50 rows at a time. You're not gonna see an input form much bigger than that without paging through it. And in fairness, SQL Server can pretty easily handle 25 to 50 individual insert statements. That's probably not going to be a big deal. But what if we're talking about writing code for something besides a web form? What if we're talking about writing, say, an import process? And that import process, we expect to handle 50 million rows inserted into the table. Well now, if we use that same pattern, we're talking about 50 million individual one row insert statements. That does not seem like a good architectural decision, does it? That's like taking half a million dollars worth of pennies to the bank and depositing them using a single deposit slip for each penny. Not only is that gonna burden the teller, but it's gonna burden the whole bank in the process. What we really need here is a way to code so that SQL Server says, all right, I've got 50 million pennies I need to put in the bank here, and I'm gonna do that using just one deposit slip. In other words, that pattern that we talked about before, for each row in the table, do this with column A, this with column B, and so on. Instead of thinking for each row in the table, we need to simply think for the table. Now let's see how we can handle that with code in T-SQL. This time, rather than loop through a cursor row by row, we want to use just one insert statement. That'll be our one deposit slip for these 50 million rows. Any sort of transformational logic that has to take place can do so inside of the select statement because remember we're doing for the table, do this with column A, this with column B, and so forth. And T-SQL has a number of tools available that will allow us to do this inside the select statement. Now don't worry about case and the syntax or any of the particulars really for now. We'll discuss that more later. What's really important here is that we recognize that the vast majority of times when we think we need to do something on a row by row basis in our T-SQL code, we can actually find a way to do that instead in sets. And when we start to operate in sets, when we start to think like SQL Server thinks, thinking in sets, then the server will reward us with faster performing queries and queries that take up fewer resources.